Welcome to Electron Line. To show you how useful these differential equations are, the homogeneous type or even the inhomogeneous type or non-homogeneous type with constant coefficients, is to show how much a relationship there is between those equations and physical situations such as a harmonic oscillator that may be damped and like circuits that have resistors, inductors and capacitors in them that may be driven by some sort of voltage source. Notice the equation that describes a harmonic oscillator like this, which is damped, can be shown to be the mass times acceleration of the object, plus some force retarding the motion, maybe because of some dash pot or maybe some viscous fluid through which it has to travel, which is a function of the velocity, plus the kx, which is the force that acts on the object because of the spring. We set all that to zero, and we can see that that is simply an oscillating object that will slowly stop oscillating because of the dampening effect. If we take away the dampening effect, if there's no damping effect, then the equation simply becomes mx double dot, which is the second derivative of x with respect to time, which is mass times acceleration, plus kx, which is the force acted upon by the spring, or acted upon the object by the spring. And notice there's no damping factor, so this simply disappears. So this is the damped situation and the undamped situation. We have a similar thing that we can use for RCL circuits. Notice that the voltage across the resistor is the current times the resistance. The voltage across the inductor is the inductance times the derivative with respect to time of the current, which is L times I dot. I dot means the derivative of the current with respect to time. And the voltage across the capacitor is 1 over the capacitance times the integral of the current times dt. Now, of course, I is equal to dq dt, which is q dot. That's another way of writing dq dt. Now, if we want to write the equation that models electronic circuits, we simply add up all the voltages around the circuit and set it equal to the voltage source. So the voltage across the resistor, the voltage across the inductor, plus the voltage across the capacitor equals the voltage of the supply. Now, if we want to write that slightly differently, we can write it in terms of Q. Remember that I is Q dot, and so I dot is Q double dot, so we can write this as L times Q double dot, which is the voltage across the inductor, plus R times Q dot, because I is the same as Q dot, right here. And then the integral of I, we take the derivative of that, we get I, that would simply be Q. So the integral of Q dot is Q, so we get plus 1 over C times Q is equal to, we have to write, well, we could write velocity of time. And so this would then become the second order differential equation, it's the non-homogeneous type because we do have a voltage source and that will then simply be a function of how much charge there is across the inductor or I shouldn't say how much charge there is because Q double dot is equal to I dot which is the derivative of the current. This would be the current and this would be the integral of the current but at least in this way we have it written in terms of the charge and so in this case that would be the charge across the capacitor. If we want to write in terms of current, what we can do is we can take the derivative of everything and then we can write this as L i double dot plus R i dot plus 1 over C i is equal to the derivative of that which would be V dot of T. And so this would be the way in which we could write that very same equation as a function of current instead of a function of charge across a capacitor. And finally, let's say that we take away the source, so it's not driven at all. We simply put a charge in the capacitor, we let go, and then the, the charge will just go back and forth and back and forth inside the circuit. What we have then is we have something that looks like this. Li double dot plus Ri dot plus 1 over C times I is equal to zero. And now we have the homogeneous equation. And then this equation, of course, has a lot in common with this equation up here because it's a damped equation. The resistor here is the dampening effect. And so even though the charge will go back and forth between the 
capacitor and the inductor, since also charge will go through the resistor, slowly energy is taken out of the system, and we have a damped homogeneous equation, so we have that middle term there. And just like the damped harmonic oscillator, we have a damped circuit. And again, you can see how the second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients appears in things such as damped oscillators and in things such as circuits. And if it's not a homogeneous equation, then we know that it's driven by some sort of voltage source. And that's how we can see the usefulness of this particular differential equation, which enables us to solve many, many different kinds of problems. And this is a good way of looking at it and say, hey, that's a good equation. Let's learn how to use it, and let's learn how to find solutions to those equations. And that's how it's done.